closest neighborhood to be here with you, Professor Kwesiga, especially on this uh, sad occasion, and yet it's an occasion that uh, is an opportunity to bring us together and for us to comfort one another and hear God's word in this time. Uh, my brother, Reverend Ones Masasimo, thank you for coming to this place all the way from St. Francis Makerere, and thank you for being in time to do the, the, the first comforting earlier in the day when the body arrived, and the Reverend Canon Geoffrey Biarugawa, uh, all the way from Saint, from the Church of the Resurrection, Bogolobi, we welcome you to Chambogo area and uh, to come and do this ministry. We're going to now invite the MC, Mr. Biarugawa, to come and lead us in the session of laying of wreaths uh, and uh, some eulogies and thereafter we shall continue with the ministry of God's holy word as we listen to the reading and uh, continue to hear what God has in store for us through his servant. So the MC, Mr. Yarugawa, you're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, church leaders. We shall have uh, the rain of wreath, and this will be guided by the Uganda Funeral Services Group. We have uh, a few, and as I said, if you have your wreath that is not registered, please uh, get in touch with, uh, with the MCs. So we shall start with the the wreath of the husband to the late uh, prophet. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, the children, very kind uh, and your siblings. Uh, all of you, even the, the husband, yes, you are a child. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, the children. I uh, will keep you in prayer. You get strength to go through this. Uh, we are going to have the next one from the, the right corner of Mama Mbawa's and family. have the representative from Kenya. I'm sure that we have arrived where Justine uh, was, was born. Okay. As we wait, we can have... They are here. Okay. Welcome. And thank you for supporting uh, Okay. 
Uh, this is going to be followed by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ntiru. As Yuiri uh, is preparing. Thank you very much, Willy. We shall have uh, one person on the list to stand for recognition. Uh, uh, that is uh, the deputy to Professor Mr. Kambasha. If, if I don't mention the right name, you excuse me. So Mr. Kambasha is laying the list on behalf of the Uganda Industrial Institute. Uh, thank you very much. Then we'll have Chairman Sola. Thank you. The chairman is over. So what is the name of the village? That is school which Professor chairs. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Professor is the chair of uh, Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, we are two chairmen, so, but uh, we are so grateful for the entire solidarity who have come to identify with Professor Kwesiba. I think these people were in there before most of us were born, uh, but they have kept the friendship. I thank you very much, entire uh, school, Old Boys Association. Professor is the chairman of the board, right? Board of Governors. Thank you very much. We will have uh, Mr. and Honorable Gaikayo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pugai Kayo and Honorable. Uh, again, for identifying with the professor, uh, we have next Bank of Africa. After Bank of Africa, we shall have uh, Sister Jacinta. Bank of Africa, we will appreciate. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sister. Uh, we, we have one last one uh, from Penina uh, and, 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 and Peter Nakajizi.
Thank you very much uh, for, for being courageous. Uganda Technology and Management Institute. A representative from uh, okay. Thank you very much. We have uh, to see me, Krista Bell. To see me. And then last day we will have better wines and juices. To see me. Thank you. Those who are coming in, you are most welcome. Uh, we have uh, some of them are not registered, but the Uganda Small Scale Industries. Thank you very much. Uh, the Prime Minister Emeritus, the Right Honorable John Patrick Mama Mbabazi, and your wife uh, Jacqueline, uh, the former Minister of Regional Cooperation, Honorable Bagene, the current and past members of Parliament uh, present. Uh, once again, would really like to welcome all of you. Uh, this is a very difficult uh, moment for Charles and family, uh, but also it avails us the opportunity uh, to share the memories we have of Justina, and especially good memories of that. Um, I know that uh, a few uh, people uh, about to, to speak and share with us uh, the experiences with Justin and the family. Uh, and indeed, we'll be extremely privileged to hear that. 
Uh, may I uh, therefore start with uh, remarks uh, from Mrs. Penina Katagize. You're welcome, Penina. The Rishisha family has lost. The entire community has lost. If one of us who knew just who has lost, I say farewell to my sister in law, my sister, and my mother. He has lived a life to the fullest according to God's will. Justina's name, according to the Bible, means rightful, fair, equal, and impartial. And indeed she was. As a sister-in-law, Justina accepted us of who we are, we celebrate her as a, a mother to very resourceful children, <coughs> nephews, nieces, siblings, communities who all went through her and she gave specific attention to every one of us. I knew her when I attended her wedding to my brother in 1972, I was young, but I admired Justina at the instant. She hugged me and told me she loved me. And indeed, it was demonstrated when Justina and the husband chose to take me to the USA for further study. Today I celebrate a life of love and inspiration from a woman who became my mother, sister, confident, role model, one woman who told me, who taught me valuable lessons that you cannot get in any school. Justina told, taught me how to pray and she equipped me with the life skills that have kept me going up to today. She was a rock in the family. She adored education and as a virtual sacrifice she put her schooling on hold to see others achieve their aspirations first. That is how incredible she was. This can be done by very few. In the, in the diaspora where I lived with her and her family, she was the warmth of the home. She taught me how to cook and even how to walk and behave on the American streets and how to respect myself and others. She was always there to receive me with a warm cup of chocolate from school when it was during those winter times. She 
was my mother during my wedding to Peter, where she did a lot of counseling to both of us, how to live a good married life. I became a good student. I copied a lot from the way she treated her husband and everyone from whichever country, everyone who came to her home. Notably, she took on the role of guardianship of our own children who still live in the U.S. And that role, she passed it on to her children, Dr. Lynn, Joy, Derek, Maria, who continued to journey with them up to today. Upon return to Uganda, our relationship even became more meaningful. I came first and she came um, on another time. We were faced with the reality of extended families and still Justina never wavered. She welcomed everyone in her home. Whether in sorrow or happiness, Chambogo became an eventful place for all the nieces, Kuhinjiras, graduations, and even taking all those sick people who would come here before they go to the hospital. She was there for them. My rock, Justine, I have sowed a blossoming seed in your children, Irene, Derek, Maria, and Joy, and the entrance in the family, Asko and Stuart. I hope your legacy will live on in them and your great and grandchildren. Um, Oli is one of our grandchildren. We miss you beyond comprehension. And thank you for loving us. Last but not least, I thank my brother Charles, who has been a formidable companion for the last 46 years. I thank the children too. Together, you have raised many of us. I pray that at a suitable time, we could all contribute to a foundation in memory of Justina. It will live forever. Goodbye, my dear. He will meet. Rest in peace. I have only one other note. We got overwhelming tributes from the world over. So what we saw possible is to put in a in a living memory booklet for Justina. It is still under print uh, as we continue to receive all the tri tributes. Thank you so much. Justina, rest in peace. Thank you. Maybe just say where I have stand, stood here, Peter Gatejize. Privileged to have married Charisse's uh, only sister. When we married in America, Justine was there for us. And I will only just mention one thing. I had the privilege, I think it's October. I think I'm the last one who was with Char uh, Justine at the farm at Choruhega a few weeks ago. Walked around. We were supposed to go back and help prune the trees. So at least I have that memory that we live with. Our children bring greetings. I'm sure they have been in touch. Patience has sent us. It will be in the booklet. We thank you all, honorables and respective capacities and friends. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Penina, uh, with your uh, dear husband for uh, 
and it's very good memories uh, of Justina. Uh, may I uh, therefore invite Honorable Bamwanga uh, to make his remarks. and the children and the entire Shisha family, the clergy, the good friends and the relatives who have come to celebrate with us the life of Justine. I stand here to speak in two capacities. One are the cousin of Charles Kresger, and also as a very good friend of his. Uh, Charles Kresger is my cousin because his mother was my aunt. And when I met Charles Kresger, it is many, many years ago, we were small children, the Kamari homeboys. Uh, it's exactly over 55 years when I met Charles at Mugabe in the primary and the junior, and uh, later on for him he went to entire school, and me I went to Tobere, where I also met my other good friend whom I have been with for the last 50 years, right when I remember was he, and also Godfrey Tugaka who was with me in Mugabe, I have also known him for over 55 years, John Jung Jenyi, we have also known each other for the last 55 years. So we have had a lot together since that time. Justine is one great woman I met uh, 48 years ago. I will come to that because when I went to entire school, after Kwesi had gone, I also managed to uh, go to Nairobi for the university, where actually I found one of Shem Magaine and Charles Kresge, as you remember, Charles Kresge had just narrowly escaped from uh, Mutukura uh, out of, I think, 260 people, only 68 or 65 survived from Mutukura. And to 605, only 60 survived. The reason I'm never to say this is that I want to thank God to have got a lady in the names of Justin, and I want to thank Mr. Mbu, who is the best friend of Chais and the family, I'm sure he will be joining us tomorrow, who made it possible to make Chais settle as he was running to Nairobi in exile. Charles was a friend of Mbu because Mbu was working with only by Gaine. And as luck would have it, a man running for exile, to exile finds a good friend indeed and a good friend indeed. Justin was working with Mbu. And of course, Charles was a friend of Mbu. And the relationship became, they became friends. And go, as, as they have said, Eventually, they got married in 1972 when I was at the University of Nairobi. Charles has a lot of virtues, but when you, whatever, a good, whatever a great man does, there is a woman who suffers it all. That's why sometimes we say, the man is the head of the family. I can assure you, the de facto head of the home is the wife. And Justin has done it since they met up the time when she has, been, she has left us. She took care of Charles because at the time he was a student, a student studying uh, 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 aviation and the lady. And we are not ashamed to say this. I'll share it with Charles. She would get her sleep, her salary check and hand it over to Charles. That is the kind of woman you can have 
that you never ever have, you never have anybody to take care of you in that circumstance. So when I was in Nairobi, again I said, we are running away from Amin. And at that time there were a few Ugandans, and the students of course we didn't have where to go, apart from the school, the university and the reading the books. One of the people who really welcomed us in Nairobi as Ugandans was Charles Kweska, I want to shame again and Elna and the Madame, uh, uh, Christian, madam, to get a good meal from a good family, from a good lady, to get a drink, sometimes it would be very, very broke. And you'd have to walk around and you look for where Ugandans are. Some Ugandans will say, hey, you, you, you may, young boys, go back to school and study. Charles has got the want culture, the want to philosophy, that he just to get even when the food is almost finished, you can give you a drink, one or two, but you never call to share the bill. You know that this is a culture where they say, let's speak the bill. That is not serious. Madame has gone, but she has left us with great children, very intelligent children. I can assure you, when you see these children, the way they behave is the way the father and the mother behave, with a very fantastic, infectious smile. Uh, uh, I was uh, lucky to uh, to meet uh, to go at the airport this morning to meet Charles. I've always been whenever you go to the airport to meet uh, to, 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 to to get a, a body, it is one of the most difficult things you go through. But because of Charles's character, his his uh, social uh, 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 networks. Social capital networks has helped us. And he started all this since he was in senior one, up the time that we have gone through this. I wonder, because when we met, at least we were old people, but you find Charles a friend of the high, the mighty, a friend of the low, a friend of the rich and the poor. And he has touched many, many lives. You cannot believe it, we had a problem, because we, I knew if we were to allow everybody to come, there are so many people who have been calling me from America, from Kawali, from Chigali, all sending condolences to each other. So since uh, the, 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 the special capital network we have you built and shared has really impacted on everybody, even from Thai school, even from Nairobi, even from America, even from London. I remember when I was coming from uh, uh, Canada, I passed through uh, Cleveland, and they, 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 they hosted me for one week with my our children. I was with Charles for all that time and Justin, but Justin, when I was about to come, she asked me, Stephen, my brother-in-law, we are here earning dollars, we are here enjoying ourselves, but we miss back home. We miss Charles to go back to Ghana. And actually, when Charles came, we went around together and uh, around East Africa, and indeed, Charles made a decision. And as I talk now, the rest is history. I want to congratulate Charles for having been given an opportunity to contribute to this nation. Some of you remember the Uganda Industrial Research Institute, where there used to be dogs and cats and rats. The man has transformed it. Charles is a very a genius. Is transform transformation law is not transaction law. If you go to Chambogo now and you see what is there, you will be surprised. I have seen some of you have not visited uh, the, 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 the State of Art uh, Industrial Park in Namavi. I was there, I looked at the press, and when the president was visiting, I had him asking Charles, how did you do this? It is a, good, a big place that if we stock, uh, we will really establish it, we are going to have the highest excellence of technology and innovation, and our children and grandchildren will get employment. I don't want to talk much. I think I'll be able to talk with Kabari and uh, at the in Ndungamu, but I want to thank you all. The reason you are here is the, what I said, the social capital network that has invested in you, the people. The people that have come here, the people who are everywhere, because Charles has been a good man. His wife has been a good wife. 
This lady has taken care of Charles so, so much that any time we will come here, any time we will go in Nairobi, she was always there for us, even when when Kashori in, in, in Katima, she's at home. I agree with Benna, you have really lost like somebody who like a mother to you. But also as the brother-in-laws, the clansmen, we have lost a great woman. And we wish her a, a farewell and definitely a good, I'm sure, we will give her the, the peaceful rest that she deserves in this world. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, Bamonga, for uh, your remarks, uh, especially sharing with us the long relationship you've had uh, with the Kwesiga uh, family. But just as uh, Justina did to Charles, uh, I'm still waiting for that, uh, for my wife's uh, paycheck. Uh, maybe, just maybe one day. <laughs> Uh, may I therefore have the opportunity and privilege to invite uh, Honorable uh, Bagaina to make his remarks. Professor Charles Kwesiga and your family, Right Honorable Ama Mambawazi, Prime Minister Emeritus, the clergy who are with us, and all friends that have come to this function. It was a sad moment for me when I learned about the sudden death of Justina in Machakos, Pangundu Nairobi, I couldn't believe it. I remembered, looking back to the 70s, early 70s, when I knew Justina, as she worked for a company that were my associates, one of whom later joined me in the Bagina and Company, uh, John Wu, who later became a very close friend to the family. I remember when Charles fell in love with Justina and decided to marry, he informed me as a very close friend who had received him in Nairobi, uh, not only as a friend but as a, as a Shinyajiro. In fact, that's when I got to know who he was. Shinyajiro is a, a saying of the of the Bagahi in, uh, in Kigali, and that's where we relate. So I remember reading a delegation to Kangundo to ask for the hand of Justina's, Justina's hand in marriage to Charles Quesica. The parents of Justina and relatives graciously granted us a request and we came home back to Nairobi and uh, soon started preparations for the wedding. I had the privilege of being the chairman of the committee and on the wedding day doubled as best man 
in the waiting. And later in the evening, I was the, the after party in my residence in Oresho. I was deeply involved because Charles was very close to me and to my family. And that friendship has lasted for years. I remember fondly the radiant smile on Justina's face. For all the years that I have known her, I never seen anger on her face. She was always smiling and friendly. And I knew that my brother Charles had married a wife that was going to be very useful in the family. And indeed she was a loving mother to these children who helped them to get educated and a loving wife to my brother Charles. So it was very, very sad that Christina passed on. After the wedding, sometime, Charles and Justina left us in Nairobi and went to America for further studies. But we were constantly in touch all the time. Uh, we were asking what was happening in Uganda <coughs> and what was happening in Nairobi during the struggle we had. And I kept him informed of the progress we were making until we came back to Kampala, to Uganda, as an RAM in government. I was happy that they decided to come back when they did, and I knew we would continue interacting as we did before. So it is sad that we shall no longer see that radiant smile on Justina's face because she has gone. My family and I bring condolences to you, Charles, and the family. And we pray the Almighty God to give you courage and strength to go through this very difficult time when you mourn your wife, your mother, and it is our prayer that the Almighty God rests Justina in peace. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Bagene, uh, for, uh, for that, for giving us that uh, enduring and rich relationship uh, with Professor uh, Kwesiga. Thank you. Um, we are time constrained, but nevertheless, uh, we do have a multitude of condolence messages. Uh, but what I can do, I have two of them with me, and possibly I should just go through very quickly. Uh, it's reflective of what we have. Uh, this is from Utamu, that's the Uganda Technology and Management University. Um, the management and staff of Uganda Technology, in other words, Utamu, learn with deep sorrow the death of your beloved wife, Mrs. Kwesiga, on Tuesday the 16th. We pray that the Almighty God guides and comforts you together with the entire family. Accept our sincere and deepest our sympathies. We also have one from a young lady who says, uh, Dear Uncle Charles and family, I'm so sorry to hear this unexpected loss of Justina Kwesiga. Please accept my heartfelt condolences 
She was an amazing woman who lived life with poise, faith, confidence, and laughter. I admire the way she lived her life and the light uh, she brought to others. Uh, she was a very special woman uh, who will be very much missed. Uh, we reflect the best parts of our parents uh, thanks to the loving way they raised us. Take comfort in the great memories as you grieve. I know she loved you so much and prepared you to handle uh, this tragic loss. You in my thoughts and prayers, love. Uh, patience Ngatejize from Cardiff Metropolitan University. Uh, may I therefore uh, invite uh, Justina's family uh, from Kenya to make their remarks. Uh, Justina's family from representative. Uh, Charles informs me that uh, his brother-in-law is still on the way, so um, when he arrives, um, I'm pretty sure that we'll have the privilege to hear uh, what he'll share with us. Uh, now, this is the moment uh, that I shall invite uh, the children of Professor uh, Kwesika and Justina uh, to make their remarks. Eldest and I'm Eileen Questiga, and by the virtue and encouragement and so much stored in me by my mother and my father, I'm Dr. Professor Eileen Questiga. And I felt when I came into this compound, I've been strong somewhat in Nairobi, Kenya, but. Coming today at the airport and my mother not being there was hard. Coming to our compound, sitting here today, I was broken. But I, as you started talking, I felt mom is living through us. There's a side of mom that you don't know. And I would be remiss if I didn't share it. So three things, and I'm going to be very quick because I'm a professor and we have the gab and the gift of talking, but I'll try and summarize it. But the first thing I want you to know about my mother, my mother was a trendsetter, okay? A trendsetter. Who is a trendsetter? A trendsetter is somebody who goes above and beyond the limits set before them. Let me tell you a story. Where my mother grew, Kwakadole, even somebody going abroad, that's a fairy. Okay, that was something was, no, even in the days that they got married, it was, it was unimaginable she could marry somebody from another country. But my mother did it. Even going backtracking on that, education-wise, all of us here have multiple, I don't know how many degrees <laughs> between all of us. That is not a coincidence. It comes from the two parents that we have. But today I'm going to speak about my, father, my mother. My mother was so little, we are told stories of how she skipped grades, was accelerated multiple times. She, at 11 years old, she was three grades ahead of whichever, went to schools which are still stalwarts in that they are high-performing schools. Her high school has been a top school for 40, 50 years. She was one among the first to make that cup. So that's 
the, li li line the legacy that we come from, okay? A trendsetter, our mother. So, as we even share our titles, they pale compared to what my mother had to go through and to do and to be in another country, as you had, where she sacrificed even her pursuit to make sure her family was well. That's my mother. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. We used to use it against her, the trendsetter she was. If I, when I was in my younger age, I would bring on somebody home that she didn't like, I'd be like, hey, mom, you remember, you did set the trend. You married somebody from another country, you know? So mine can surely not be that bad, you know? So many times, you know, she would say, oh, do you think you, you really can do that? I'm like, mom, you know? So look at you. So her words came to bite her in a good way because we were fearless because she was fearless, okay? In so many ways. Second thing I want to share about my mother, my mother was faithful. Look at her, my mother was a beauty. In her 20s, they, Uganda, you haven't seen a beauty such as that. You know? That's why dad had to go to Kenya. You know? Look at us, you know? And we have some Uganda in us. You know? You know? So my mother, even as beautiful she was, my mother was faithful to my dad to the end. And it's not that she didn't have opportunity. She did. But my mother would not. My mother stood by my father, no matter what. We saw what it was to be dedicated. And some of us, you know, because of youth, we are impatient. We want fast results. But she's like, no, you got to pace yourself, pace your time. And she has firebrand children. But we learned, we have learned by seeing our mother, what she has done. And even among friends. There's none of, you know how parents gossip friends never in my mother's house. You would never hear her speak of somebody else's drama or what. In fact, she would even avoid phone calls. That was my mother. And even when she became to Uganda, where there's fodder for that, my mother stayed away because she was that kind of woman. I love Uganda, by the way. <laughs> you know, so what I'm saying, within family. My mother was faithful. She stuck to her family. She understood what it was. Now, here's the last part, which is so important, and which we have to continue, even as, as children. Love. My mother was the epitome of love. We are four children, and you know there is drama, you know, even among siblings. And I would observe my mother. Even when my mother came to stay at my house, where I would feel I was the most precious child, okay? And when she went to, you know, and I would listen, when she would call, have a conversation with Derek, it would be like, oh, he's the beloved son. <laughs> and the same thing when she would talk to Joy, oh, sweetie darling, in fact, even, you, you would get confused even to be jealous, but you couldn't. And of course, Maria, beloved Maria. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who? Actually, even we are jealous, got to spend so much of her last years with our mother, okay? Mom was that way. Each one of the kids knew that they were the favorite. That's how mom made us feel. Even when you'd be so mad with some of your siblings to call and complain, mom would be like, no, you know what? You know, that is your brother. That is your sister, you know? So you are one no matter what. And that also, we saw that extend to the extended family. And you know we have all kinds of family members, okay? But my mother was a peacemaker. That was her nature. Ignore that one. Ignore that one. It's okay. Continue giving, continue giving. That's what the legacy my mother left us. And we hope to continue to honor it. And also I hope by sharing that also is something you take back. We didn't just come here to mourn. We came to celebrate the legacy of our mother. And that's what she taught us. Love, faithfulness, and also being trendsetters, pushing the boundaries. Thank you. <laughs> this lovely woman behind me is my grandma. Grandma, 
Such a simple word, yet to me and my family it holds such meaning. It symbolizes great strength, integrity, faith, kindness, compassion, a mother, a sister, a friend, and pure undulating love. She created such a strong and amazing family and has truly touched so many people with her grace and kindness. Grandma to me was a safe space, never angry nor judging. She truly emulated what it meant to be a kind and compassionate person. No matter how bad I messed up, I knew she would welcome me with loving arms. She loved me and always called me her favorite grandchild and she was my favorite grandma. Whether it was us sharing the love of basketball or, where, or when we used to sneak snacks when my mom wasn't around or how comfortable I felt in her arms, every aspect of my relationship with my grandma was filled with love and compassion. And I'm fortunate to not only have such an amazing person as my grandmother, but I'm fortunate to have spent the amount of time that I have with her and to have the memories that we have shared. Though I wish to have talked to her more and learned more from her graceful stature, I realized that just by being in my life, she has given me all I need to be a successful and great person just like she was. Auntie Joy, Auntie Maria, Uncle Derek, Grandpa and Mom, I'm truly sorry for the loss of such an amazing person in your lives to return to the earth. When it returned, its impact didn't stop there. Instead, it continued to nourish the future generation of plants. And that's truly how we should view her life because even in death, she will continue to make us better people through the lessons and memories she has imparted unto us. And lastly, grandma isn't dead. Instead, she will live through every memory, experiment, experience, and good deed we, go we do. She will live through us. So instead of being sad, please, let's grape, let's celebrate such a wonderful woman. I love you, grandma, and may God bless your soul. First, let me just say thank you to every single one of you for coming and sharing this moment with us. It's greatly appreciated and um, it means a lot to us. Thank you very much. Just have a short message from her children to her. Mother, mom, mama, mommy, mama Sita, mama son, mama bear. These are all names we call. <laughs> you are a woman of grace and mercy, a woman of forgiveness, thoughtfulness, and unconditional love. You are gorgeous, intelligent, perseverant, robust, and resilient, while unassuming, quiet natured, unconditionally loving, and sweet, all concurrently. You are everything. Mama Bear, you are just lovely, inside and out. You soared academically and won any beauty pageant, walking down any road with a fine, humble smile on your face. You overcame any obstacles to defy defeat, break barriers, and move mountains. Truly a trendsetter ahead of your time. We miss our caregiver, our best friend, our confidant and our hero, but we find comfort in knowing that you are with God. Mom, you have always been a strong, praying, welcoming, and sweet woman to all who know you, or have merely crossed your path. Your irresistible laughter and incredible smile leave an impact on everyone with whom you come in contact with. We will all miss your presence. Your love of nature and zeal to ensure that everyone is at peace resonate in both you and our hearts. As we cry and cry, we close our eyes, see you embracing us, and hear you telling us, it's okay, baby, I'm with the Lord, it's all good. <laughs> Raising us was by far not an easy task. However, you ensured that this undertaking was completed with such natural poise and true love. 
You never ever judged us. You were and will forever be no nonsense, yet always patient and kind, teaching us Bible stories, and making sure that we understood each message. When we were when we were wrong and necessarily scolded, both as adults and children, time after time, he greeted us with a smile and warm hug shortly thereafter. Mama san, you often told you often toted us to and from any destination, be it 10 or 10,000 miles on public transportation, and never once complained. We traveled together to Kenya and Uganda from the United States, one miserable baby on your back, one a newly school-aged student who threatened to run away every day, and two eldest children trying to lend a helping hand through this seemingly impossible mission. All the while, you always led us, capturing moments with your camera to emphasize the happiness you experienced, just to have us together, meeting and celebrating with family. A woman of many hats, you worked several jobs, including, but not limited to, secretarial work, cashiering, accounting, attending university, helping your children with educational matters, all while making sure dishes were washed, the home was clean, great food was cooked, and homework was completed, many times simultaneously. Who knows a person who can cater over 100 guests at annual home functions, leave her work directing the young people in her kitchen, make a bomb samosa, and be the most gracious hostess, all without breaking a sweat, who is smart, sassy, charismatic, beautiful, and fun, the incredible mom, our Justina. Mom, even when we were all terrified about your procedure, you came rushing and sleeping at the hospital for days, we can still hear your voice down the hall, laughing, assuring us that everything is and will always be okay, regardless of our circumstances. Through your example, times shared, wisdom, wit, and conversation, you taught us about matters of life that made us all whole. These lessons will never be forgotten. We eternally appreciate you and are so very thankful to have shared all our, all our moments together. Our love of God is why we are attempting to find rest in knowing that we are no longer together in the physical aspect. Mama, you are by far the most giving and selfless person we have ever known. You fast for all. You pray for all. You forgive all. You love all. You talk to all, you take care of all, you appreciate all. You attended church each day, your children attended church each Sunday, you volunteered at church each day, and you volunteered for outreach services for refugees. Through these endeavors, you drove friends from church, you drove friends from church home, took them to work, took them to hospitals, took them to your home to eat. Then, when, then went to your second church service afterwards. Mom, you love everyone and it epitomize the meaning of God's love by putting all before you. You are everyone's mother for so, so many reasons. You are our mother, always in heaven. You are an angel smiling above us. We are so proud of you and we thank you. We are devastated by the thought of losing you we want to be together every day, but we know that your spirit and love are endless. We pray that God gives our family the strength to continue your legacy by loving one another the way you love us, to love and appreciate one another's differences despite what they may be. Your wisdom, care, and concern have kept us all alive and thriving. You taught us that everyone was beautiful. We are so blessed to call you our mother, the greatest mother anyone 
could ever know. You made and continue to make us better people. Heaven has gained an angel. We look forward to the day when we are walking to church, cooking, sharing stories and laughs, watching your favorite television shows, listening to music, dancing, and singing again. The guaranteed best times of our lives. We love you, Mama Sita. Eileen, Derek, Maria, Joy, and all for whom you care and provide. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Derek, uh, for giving us the insight of uh, your mother's life and indeed uh, your relationship with her. Uh, before I call on uh, Professor, uh, Professor Kwesiga, may I invite, invite Dr. Kamgasha, the Deputy ED, uh, Yuri, to make a few remarks. Professor Charles Kwesiga and your family, the Right Honorable Mama Babazi, Emeritus Prime Minister of Uganda, your wife, the church, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, mine is a simple message of sympathy and support to Professor Charles Kwesiga, Executive Director our executive director at Uganda Industry Research Institute, and the family upon the untimely loss of Mrs. Justina Kwesiga. The management and staff of URI convey heartfelt condolences to you, Professor, upon the loss of your dear wife, Mrs. Justina Kwesiga, and we stand in solidarity with you, your family, and friends at this very difficult time. We are forever grateful as the Yuri family for the great sacrifice Mrs. Kwesiga made in consenting to her husband, Professor Kwesiga, and your decision to move back to Uganda from the USA and offer dedicated service to your country. Mrs. Kwesiga was thereafter selfless in supporting uh, her husband with the transition, but saw him not only take up leadership at URI, but also transform the institution from a derelict entity. You heard Honorable Bamanga talk about the snakes and the wildlife that was occupying Yuri. That is very true. It's not a joke, it's true. Today, Yuri is now a thriving center of excellence in the East African community for industry research and beyond. And when you talk about exemplary service to country, by Professor Kwesiga. You could be here all day. I don't want to start that chapter because we'll be here tomorrow. Uh, this is a man who has offered us leadership at URI, who has even started other institutions. Uh, those of you who have had the privilege to visit Uganda Petroleum Institute, Chigumba, it would not be there today if it wasn't for his initiative. There are countless efforts uh, that through the leadership of Professor Kwesiga have happened uh, community development projects in all the regions of the country, from here to Arua, from here to Kisoro, from here to Soroti, even Busi on the border uh, with Kenya, where the late was born. Uh, all of those efforts. Some of us have had the privilege, Professor, to work with you on that journey, and some are in this compound. Uh, they've been here in your absence. Sometimes I wondered whether they were employees of Yuri or your family or your friends. It got confusing, but 
they've been here and they're standing here. Uh, we hold fond memories of visits from Mrs. Kwesiga that she often made when she was still in the USA after letting uh, Professor leave. And she would come in to check on him to see how he was faring. I witnessed that myself firsthand on a number of occasions. And offer him moral support because the journey has not been easy to go from snakes to center of excellence. It has not been an easy ride at times. Uh, we also remember, we always remember uh, Mrs. Kwesega as a friend of Yuri because this very compound, she has hosted us a number of times with warmth, with love and affection. The management and staff of Yuri, therefore, steadfastly stand with you, Professor Kwesega, during this very difficult time. And we further assure you of our unwavering and continued support towards completing the mission that you started at URI with the help of your dear wife. And where we may fail to adequately be there for you, sir, we take comfort in the knowledge that God will be watching over you and your family. As scripture tells us in Isaiah 41.10, God says that, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. May the soul of the late rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kamgasha. Uh, for sharing uh, with us uh, your experiences with the family. It's a, it is an extended family, I dare say. Uh, may I therefore uh, take this opportunity uh, to invite, invite uh, Professor Charles Kwesiga, the husband, uh, to the late to make a few remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, my children stole my thunder, and so I have to read a different script which I have not written. <laughs> However, I'm happy that you are welcome to misery to us. I'm happy to know that my family has so many serious friends, so many serious friends, and it is not my work alone. Uh, the organizations that have come here, very touching. Uh, I'm glad my president of uh, and so far, Kalguru is here. There is School All Boys Association. Uh, I happen to be the current chairman of the uh, Board of Governors of Terry School. And uh, to see, I know most of the Terry School Old Boys are. Uh, getting up there, especially those who know me from when I was there, uh, they may not be able to stand up if I ask them to. But let's give it a try, man. Eh? Let's give it a try. Uh, <laughs> can the OBs of Ontario School, especially those uh, within uh, that uh, era of uh, 60s and 70s, Okay, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, okay. Prime Minister. Uh, I remember Zinana who was the, the original uh, head of IGG. Kamugasha, my friend, my classmate from senior one, senior three. Only to senior three. Because we did all level in senior three, me and him, uh, the skipped senior four. 
That's why, that probably that's, uh, Justina must have found out about that. Uh, there, Justice John Wilson Kwesiga, Professor, uh, my buddy, classmate at Erevo, Rutaro, Professor Rurangirwa, that one was there before I went in and became, uh, we have since met, and very soon you're going to hear the wonders he's doing for Uganda. <coughs> Richard Till, my mentor, uh, friend, uh, who sent me a message after learning about uh, Justina's zest. He sent me a message that Justina had a zest for life, truly a fountain of joy. That is uh, Till English. Uh, really, uh, Yuri, thank you very much. I heard Uzia, Uzia. Wait, anybody from Uzia here? Huh? Okay. Bella Wine, where are you? I finally have good news for you. Okay. <laughs> Bella Wine started at Yuri. Now it is a, a regional, international, international facility. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to see that. Uh, my homeboys, my primary school, we still have some uh, around. <laughs> uh, my friends, uh, really. I saw General Mugume is around. Eh? Oh my God, my friends are here. These are UPDF senior people. Uh, General Mugume is the chairman of the uh, uh, board of NEC, National Enterprise Corporation, and I'm the proud uh, vice chair to him on that board. Thank you for coming. I'm really excited to see this. But then, when you are getting excited about the people you are meeting, and then you look at this, say, it is a very difficult situation. Uh, I've seen the Valugas coming. There are people who have been, who have really nurtured our friendship. Uh, I saw Professor Mondo coming. I saw a number of you, please, I cannot name names now and finish. I'm particularly related that my good friend, Amun Mbawa, is here with my wife. I'm looking at people who have known me for ages. Uh, James Byra, I saw him standing somewhere. This is one of those who inspired me to go to the school. It was an entire school OB. And I remember in 1965 when he was a labor officer in Barara. He liked me so much. He took me on his big motorcycle, took me to some labor case, and because he was on duty and uh, I wasn't, I drank all his premise. But anyway, <laughs> he would allow me to do that. Uh, now, back to the subject. Uh, we are mourning uh, my wife, the best of my wife, Justine. Uh, Justine and I met in 1972. He was at the time working for uh, Stephen Momang, as he mentioned it. Uh, a, a John Boo, who is a Kikuyu, who was introduced to me by Shemba Gain. I remember that evening at Gaylord Inn. I was a, a destitute young man just in exile after running away from Idi Amin. Uh, the narrow escape that Stephen Yamanga talked about. 
And uh, actually, the way we met was interesting. I think she was just curious to see who is this young Ugandan uh, who, when he comes to our office, my boss stops everything he's doing. She was very curious about what I was. He, you know, he doesn't seem to have any money. I don't even know where he works. <laughs> At that time I was actually a trainee with the civil aviation. So I think it is that curiosity that led her into my direction. And then when she, when I had a, uh, a casual uh, request that we meet after work, she was eager to find out who is this man. And so we went for a say where me and uh, Uncle Shem used to hang out. And after that we ended up in a, in a, a club and I danced up a storm. I don't think she had seen anybody dance as well as I do. <laughs> and that was the end game. And so, she didn't marry me. She didn't marry me for money, because I had none. She didn't uh, marry me for being, I mean, I wasn't even a Kenyan. But when uh, Shemba again uh, led, us, uh, led the delegation to Kambani, and uh, uh, one old man asked me, he said, uh, you come all the way from Uganda to marry here, don't you have women where you come from? <laughs> but uh, Shem was able to answer that. Uh, it's their fond memory. After marrying, uh, my star was brightening a little bit as I picked up a few more uh, licenses to work uh, with the director of civil aviation. Uh, the family was beginning to grow. Then, June 1976, I went to work one afternoon and they told me there had been a change in the roster. So can you please go and check at the notice board? I went to check at the notice board. I had no job. Uh, the, somehow, uh, Vice President Moy at the, at the time and, uh, and Idi Amin had struck a pact where they would force most of us back to our countries. And you know why. And so, uh, and also there was a, a, a uh, deliberate attempt by which succeeded eventually the Kenya government to break up the East African community of that time. So when I go to the notice board, I said, well, if your name is not on the roster, go to the headquarters. I go to the headquarters, they say, no, we have been, uh, tra we've been transferred to Entebbe Airport. How do I do that? I went to uh, John Kahuki, who was then uh, Director General. I explained my situation, said, Sorry, this is a political decision. There is no way we can keep you working as Director of Civilization in Kenya. He said, So if I have to choose between my job and uh, um, between your job and my life, you know what I choose. So, there I was, jobless again. So I walked to my wife's office. So you know what? I'm in a problem. With why? I have no job. I can't accept transfer to Tibet. And uh, he said, don't worry. Uh, I'm employed. And uh, my check could be coming in. I'll take care of you. Now, the problem was that the skill set I had acquired were not transferable. I had specialized on working in instrument learning systems, radar systems, uh, air navigation or aid stuff. So you can only work for government because these things are available at airports, and airports tend to be owned by government. 
So the government that had just chased me away, I couldn't get the job back. So he, he tried to say, well, maybe, anyway. Uh, so we started a journey where for six months I was making no salary. But you'd still find me seated at Francais at the bar counter, drinking like I, oh, I actually have a job. In fact, a lot of people didn't know that there was such a, was such a mess. <laughs> but she will get her paycheck, bring it to me, and I would uh, uh, take care of uh, family and myself. That's the kind of woman I admired. So, uh, so going right along, uh, we had 46 of We've had 46 years of exemplary companionship. Uh, all attributes are responsible for my success. I can testify that without any reservation. <laughs> so those of you who tell me, oh, you have done such a great job, I say, yeah, thank her. And so, I mean, she was such an incredible person, just encouraged you, uh, sacrifice for you. One of the reasons, I mean, she was a, as brilliant as any one of us, but uh, she didn't amass the degrees some of us did, because she would have to take a bad step and give us the priority while taking care of the brilliant children you see. So, what can I say about a woman like that? When we got married in 1972, now that I see Kalaja here, I, I like to repeat this story. 1972, when, uh, when we wedded, uh, Shem Bagini was the best man after being everything else. Uh, his daughter, Julie, uh, who is now a doctor, a dentist in Nairobi uh, was the flower girl. It was a family affair. And so, and then, as Shem told you, he even uh, hosted the, the after party. So, but uh, the day after the wedding, somehow my friends in, Nairo, in Kampala had organized for my parents to come to the wedding person who's just been in exile for just over two years and you were you able to stage a credible wedding uh, celebration. And so, uh, and uh, the following day, my, my parents had managed to come to the wedding. The following day, we went to have a meal. Uh, my mother saw my new bride make a sign of the cross before the meal. She says, hey, <laughs> mean, she's a Catholic. Yeah. Now, those days, strife between religions in Uganda was real. So my mother was very, very uncomfortable. And I said, okay. Uh, I asked uh, my parents, yeah, let's take a walk. So I put. Anyway, uh, so my mother says, well, son, you leave your tribe, you leave your country. Did you have to come abroad to look for a Catholic? <laughs> I said, Mama, uh, my, the life I live is not anything close to how you live in your village. I said, and the Catholics here are better than those in your place. <laughs> and then my, mother, you know, then my father stepped in and said, you know, you have to go with what your, your heart desires. And you can't control that. So years later, in 1994, I asked my wife, I said, what is a fitting tribute for my parents? considering how much they have 
uh, they did uh, as peasants and still managed to get me interested in school, managed to get me, uh, the foundation they gave me is what has made me survive and succeed. And my mother says, my wife says, well, why don't you find them visas and bring them here to see how their son lives? We did that. So in 1994, my parents came and uh, lived with us for about three months. Yes. yes. They came and lived with us for about three months. And if I was to single out one biggest achievement in my life, it was that visit. Because they showed me a different and they gave me a different perspective about my own life. Because uh, one day my mother is sitting in a living room and I was hanging around her a lot because uh, some, also my children can't speak a word of Urchiga. I was around to inter inter interpret whenever I could. And my mother looks out the picture window and sees people cutting grass and says, are those the owners of this house? <laughs> and uh, I said, no, it's my house. Uh, Justin and I had bought that house in 1985, that house on Cranston Road. And so, uh, he says, but they're cutting grass. I said, yes, they're workers. I said, they're workers? But they are white. I said, you mean white people don't work for money? And, and then I say, well, but if they work for money, do, can, can they work for a mochiga? I said, they are doing it right now. And so, uh, to see one of my few regrets is that uh, she passed on before before we got a uh, white son-in-law <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay, so uh, so you can see people who could who had a background of colonial colonialism had their mind completely colonized. And then she's in the middle of a, uh, a world where her own, uh, her own son is employing people who had colonized them. That's when I found out that my father had actually been a houseboy at uh, a colonialist home in Kabale. And uh, it was quite, quite an exciting time. And so, uh, that's, uh, then uh, when it came to returning to Uganda, uh, the president had been uh, asking me and on when can I come back to, to help in the development of my own country. And so uh, it was a difficult decision to make. But on the 16th of May, 2002, uh, I had a president. I had a meeting with His Excellency at seven, and then uh, we again talked about the prospects of my coming back. At that time, I took a little break. I called her and said, uh, "This is the situation." Justina says, "Hey, go for it, and uh, we'll, we'll do we'll do our best to 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 run." A, I'll, I'll do my best to run the family. At that time, these two, Joy and Maria, were still in university. Uh, Maria was in the final year. It was the final year or? Year, year. Yeah. Now, Joy uh, had been an interesting person because uh, uh, when we took her to Howard University, and uh, after getting her situated, uh, 
We went for dinner. Then I said, Joey, uh, we are leaving tomorrow. We are going back to Ohio. Uh, what are your needs? He says, oh, okay, I don't need them. What? A first year university student, you don't need pocket money? How come? He says, you know, I've been working. I've been working as a tutor in a, uh, for minority kids. She had been working as a uh, cashier, head cashier for Hainan supermarket. She had <laughs> all kinds of jobs. And she had a pocketbook with $2,500 as a first year student. So at that point, I said, OK, uh, this, is, uh, this young lady doesn't need me. Uh, the president is inviting me. Uh, Justina, are you sure it's OK? He's uh, do it. Besides, if things don't work out, you can always come back. Okay. So she gave me the green light to come here. So if I have achieved anything for this country, who do you thank? Okay. And, then, uh, and then, in my absence, these kids continue doing what they have done. Uh, now, this uh, professor here, had a very interesting background, I think, since, since General, you are here, I can tell you the story. <laughs> I read, when she finished her master's degree, she was doing, uh, she got into a, a training program, where she made an, so she had a project that uh, she got interested in, called uh, Enterprise Resource Planning. She got a, uh, Invite invitations from all big companies, you know, General Electric, Lincoln Electric, and many others. And she comes and says, yeah, Dad, I'm spoiled for choice. What company should I accept? You no, know, people here are always, everywhere else, they're always uh, looking for jobs when, if, when they graduate. For her, jo jobs were looking for her. And so, so she goes into uh, so I said, okay, General Electric is definitely uh, the best choice because it's the largest corporation in the world and so that. She goes there. So they post her in Erie, Pennsylvania, which was a small town in America, and she didn't like that. So eventually she goes to visit her, her old uh, friends from high school. She goes to visit them in Dallas, Texas. Comes back with that. No more Ili, I'm going to Dallas, Texas. I said, honey, number one rule in the career planning, you don't quit the job until you have had another one. Since with my ERP, watch me. She goes to Dallas. Before she got situated, everyone fell apart. Now she was no longer the pin on the hill. She had to compete. Said, me competing? Watch me, I'm doing something else. So I said, what are you going to do? Just watch me. Next time I get a letter from uh, Fort Jackson Academy, a uh, military academy. They send me a letter saying, thank you for sending, allowing your child to be one of us. I said, this letter has joined the army. What's going on? I said, Justina, did you know about this? She says, no. Aren't you concerned? No. <laughs> so, let her follow her, you know, whatever interests her. Anyway, so six months later, they called me to see them passing out as recruits. And I get there and, uh, you know, it looks very, I need those pictures, by the way. So, I'm really impressed and considering uh, what General knows about my own background. It was interesting to see my own child in a, a military academy in the United States. And the generals were telling me what a great uh, performer she was, really the best in our class, in everything. I said, okay. So I said, so are you joining the officer corps? No. 
What are you here doing? But I was invited for the intelligence. I know. <laughs> so, so, anyway, to cut the long story short, uh, the military ended up giving her a full scholarship to do her PhD. So she had a strategy which worked out. How many youth do we know who plan like that? Mom, you did a good job. So, finally, how did we lose Justina? Because that's a question I get all the time. What, what happened? What happened is uh, still a very, uh, when they explain in post-mortem, uh, showed what happened, but on Monday last week, I talked to her. She had been in, uh, uh, she had gone to Kenya for a number of uh, things to do. First and foremost, take care of her mother, her ailing mother, who has been married for 80 years. So you can imagine how old she is. And her, and she had other business transactions uh, to settle her estate. In fact, uh, quietly she had told me she was going to, to sell part of her inheritance so that she could come and, uh, and uh, do better with uh, our farm where she's going to be buried. And so on Monday she told me, uh, been, uh, we finished with that. Uh, I think we're signing on Wednesday, and so Friday I should be coming back to Uganda. Right? Tuesday it was Rome's day, but I went to the office. I had a meeting with uh, Professor Rangelo and a few other things. So the day was going fabulously well. Uh, then uh, after my meeting with them, there was another another team of people. Then towards two o'clock, I get a phone call. My brother-in-law is saying, uh, Justina, she said things are not good here. What's wrong? Me, I thought it was a whole day that uh, had uh, turned for the worst. She says, Justina, what's wrong? She's not breathing. What do you mean by that? She's not breathing. Like Rod, I say, okay, can you take her to get to get an emergency? She said, uh, can you get an ambulance? She's not breathing. So I asked another cousin exactly what's happening. She, she's dead. How? She said, well, she was quite okay in the morning. Then she complained of the fact she was even washing dishes and stuff like that. She complained of uh, some pain in the chest. And uh, sat down, had a drink of water, and kept sitting down with me on that. But she was definitely dead. The post-mortem suggests that uh, there was a blockage on all the blood vessels in the heart. I think it was a clot. And that's what, uh, uh, that's why her heart gave up. That's what happened. So, uh, the plan for the rest of the week is uh, tomorrow we take her home to, to her marital home. And then Friday we take her to the farm she loved so much. Uh, called, uh, it's, a, it's in the village of Chorhega, but uh, I think from Friday it will be called Justina's farm. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's the story. Uh, sorry, Kladje, for digging into your time, but uh, this was clearly my moment. Uh, I thank you again for, for, for coming, and that is the story of the steamer. There is a lot more, uh, because you can't collapse 46 years of serious development. You meet somebody with nothing, 
we end up uh, meeting in a place like this, having a home in uh, America, having a home, a beautiful home in a village, having, you know, I went very hard. A uh, uh, family has worked hard to you know what else can you ask for from God? Only that you should have stayed a little longer. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Charles, uh, for giving us that very compelling life story about yourself and your dear departed wife, uh, Justina. Uh, for some of us who've been your friends, uh, we've been around to witness, and, and indeed, we count ourselves as very, very privileged. Uh, and Justina here, lying ahead of us, she's an extra extraordinary woman because <laughs> For, for Charles, for most of you who know, uh, Charles makes friends. But, uh, and I'll tell you, that it's one thing making friends, but it's a different ball game, retaining friendship. Uh, meaning that uh, Charles has a, multi a multitude of friends that uh, Justina had to uh, put up with. And I'm pretty sure that some of us have been quite irritable, but she could withstand that. Uh, so, Charles, thank you very much uh, for that. May I uh, recognize the arrival of uh, Honorable Dr. Barrio Munsi, uh, the Minister of State uh, for Housing. Welcome, sir. Uh, and also a team uh, from the Toro Kingdom, uh, led by uh, Prince uh, Baguma. Uh, welcome, welcome, sir. It is therefore uh, my a singular honor and privilege uh, it is therefore uh, my privilege uh, to invite uh, the Prime Minister Emeritus the Right Honorable uh, Patrick John Patrick Amama Ambabazi uh, Sir, you're welcome to I'll make your remarks. Uh, thank you very much um, on this uh, sad day but also a day where we remember our beloved mother we want to bring greetings from uh, and also condolences from his majesty king oil and uh, royal highness the queen mother they join with us in this moment and they pray for the family to be strong and all of us as friends to extend our hearts, our thoughts, and our prayers to stand with, stand with you, Professor, and the family. And we are all praying. And also, may the memory of our mother Jacinta stay with us. Justin, stay with us for much, much more longer. Thank you very much in the interest of time.
Hello, Mashim, Ravina. The clergy, all of you in uh, your distinguished capacity, fellow mourners, I know we are short of time. I will therefore try to make my remarks um, short. But we gather here today, as we all know, to bid farewell to our mother, our sister, wife of Comrade Charles President, Justina President. It is indeed a sad day. On behalf of my family, I offer you our deep condolences, Charles, the children, and the wider family, all of you, friends. To you, I say your sorrow is our sorrow, and your pain is our pain. My brother Charles, I express to you our profound gratitude for your commitment to the struggle of our people for freedom and dignity. And we know that this came at a great personal cost to your family life. I know that your dear wife, Justina, as you have all said, played a vital supporting role. Charles here is part of a generation that chose to fight rather than submit. Like the Mexican revolutionary Emiliano Zapata, they had resolved that they would rather die on their feet than live on their knees. In so doing, they set our country on an irreversible but painful journey to the freedom that we enjoy today. And uh, sometimes I am, well, of course, I realize that 80%, maybe 85% of the population in Uganda hears this as a story because they didn't leave it. Those of us who did, those of you that experienced life in Uganda, what it was before, know what I'm talking about and know what changes have happened. And I want to thank you, my brother, for continuing that story for coming back to put meaning to the struggle we had waged for freedom. In the achievements you have mentioned yourself that are so well known in our country. And I want to say thank you for that great struggle. Thank you for the great achievements. And I want to thank my sister, Dustin, for being solidly behind you in all this. So we are gathered here to be the Justina, but also to commemorate and acknowledge her immense contribution to our country, as you have heard from many speakers before. I knew Justine, of course. Charles is a close friend and brother. Justina was a warm, welcoming, and kind person with a positive outlook on life and a fundamental faith in humanity. She could always put you at ease with her stories. Which among you does not remember Justina's great smile? I thought in his speech, Charles would really disclose what hit him when he met Justina. I think that, that smile, I suspect, 
is not flow at you. It was incredible and that infectious smile. Cherished and children, I know you did the best humanly possible. Support Justine in her time of sickness. Thank you very much. The ancient Greek philosopher Epictetus, called Epictetus, Epictetus, he said this: There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of our will. Certainly. The fact that Justine is no longer here on earth with us is beyond the power of our will. We simply can't reverse it. As Christians, we accept that there is life after death and that Christine departing this life has transited to another life. And we look forward to joining her when our time comes. She has left an indelible mark that can't be erased by her demands. Death can never take a good woman or man away, for in the hands of the people she inspired, the legacy remains and is continuous throughout generations. Her legacy is the children you see before you. You heard make great speeches today. The best tribute we can pay to Justina is to emulate a good example. May our Lord bless and comfort you and your family during this time of grief. It is not easy in the time of the pandemic, but I am very delighted that we have been able today, and I hope in the next two days, to give her the send off she is so richly deserves. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Prime Minister Emeritus, uh, we have come to the end of our speeches. We thank you so much, those who have spoken, for the encouraging words and condolences to, to the families, to the family. Uh, we are sorry not everybody will speak, we can be here up to morning, but we still have, as, as Professor said, we have tomorrow and the day after. So those who have not spoken, you bear with us. We shall stop here. We have a speech from the family of Chuanuka John Kasure. Uh, we shall hand it over to Professor. There was another one from the Bank of Uganda. Uh, those will be given to Professor. So, uh, Church, uh, we are sorry for taking long. We will continue. There is a person with another microphone for Church. Uh, please hand it over to them and we continue. We thank you very much for your time. Uh, may the soul of, of Justin rest in time of peace. to stand up and uh, sing what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer and thereafter we'll have the ministry of the word beginning with a reading that will be taken for us by the Reverend Onesimus Asimwe and uh, our preacher this evening will be the Reverend Canon Geoffrey Diarugaba what a 
we are really worried. We have only one microphone going round, exchanging hands, and uh, let's pray that the Lord will protect us from each other. As we began, we were joined by a team that was that is led by the Reverend Father Isdoro Mbareva. Since he left Chichumbi, he became a Serunkuma here. I would like to request you and your team to stand and we receive you and we recognize your presence. At some point, they will bring the remarks from the fellowship where Justina was a member so that they can spiritually account for her. I thank you for coming. Professor and family, we bring condolences to you on the death of your dear one, which is her. Death strikes without warning, and you can't say you are experienced. I think it's because each time one who has died has never died before, so you can't say we are used to dying, and uh, so it brings its own unique shocks, and especially a person who is the heart of the family. Honorable Bamanga, yes, the men are the heads, but the, my wife tells me, that you men, you, you pride yourself in calling yourself heads, but we, the women, are the necks. We can turn the heads the way we want. So when you lose the neck of the family, the heart of the womb, it is a big loss indeed. We wouldn't want to minimize it. It's a time of grieving and uh, a new chapter of trying to live and adjusting to life without the physical presence of your and our Justina. We commend you to the mercy of God and his keeping. Your creator who you know and who you serve and the fellowship of God's family, the church. Keep your place in the fellowship of the church, and the church will care for you. We can never and we When death strikes, everything else stops. In the busyness and the harshness of life, moving up and down, when death strikes, there's a shock, there's a denial. There's disbelief. You ask many questions, why and how and how, why now, really? And uh, questions, really? Uh, if it's good, she even was at her place. And, uh, you know, because but we don't even have opportunity of saying bye-bye. The projects that were ahead of her, but things can be tough. No opportunity to even care for her and nurse her. There are some things God left in his power. And they uh, Maybe it's better that way. Because I imagine if we had been given an opportunity to vote on who to die, some of us would know who would have voted. But those are matters that God has left to himself. So there's a sense of disillusionment. It can also set in. 
this is where now our faith in God is tested. Do we have faith in God? Do we trust Him to do and to be that which He has said He is and He can be? Or not? As Professor retold how they met, I was imagining that kind of dancing, he may have included some chichiga dancing, <laughs> rousing the dust that attracted the attention of this Kenyan beauty. Those memories and the shared life and fellowship, we pray that indeed they will encourage us to continue on our after the pilgrimage. The reading we have, the Gospel according to John chapter 14, Jesus was addressing his disciples and he noticed their hearts had been troubled because of the news he told them that he was going away. And he noticed it. Jesus, who was their companion, who had called them onto the project of establishing the kingdom of God. And for three years, they believed him. They walked with him. Some had abandoned their projects and gone on his band. Three years. Peter was even a married man. He and his brother Andrew had left his father's business of fishing fish. Now, before the project matures, he has bad news. He is going away. As if that's not bad enough. They don't know where he is going. As if that's not bad enough. They can't know how to join him. This is not crossing a lake to the other side. So indeed, they were troubled. And they had legitimate grounds for these troubled hearts. The kingdom project had aborted, according to them. What happens to them? How do they tell their village mates that the Jesus who they followed has just abandoned them halfway in the middle of nowhere? He can't even be seen. They began to think hard. Did we bank on the wrong horse? While our enthusiasm and excitement misplaced. Things were shaping up. Jesus was becoming very popular. They were singing some towns where he went. They were singing, Our oh man, our oh man, especially after feeding them. Now, they became troubled. Jesus noticed it. I'm a Christian by choice because I'm convinced. It is a better way. I'm convinced my deal is better with Jesus than with anyone else or elsewhere. Because in our troubles, in our questions, in our doubts, he entertains them. He pays attention. The tears, the cry, the pain we go through, the son's sense of loss. When you lose a mother, I lost my dear mother sometime, and they were following in the loss of my dear father. Even going home for Christmas didn't make sense after. Their place, counsel, direction, or the anchor of the relationship, that changes. Some equilibrium changes, it will never be the same. He entertains these thoughts. He entertains these fears. 
and disbelief and denials and pain. And he said, please do not let your hearts be troubled. They had legitimate growth. The project had failed. What happens to their future? They had given him three years of their prime time. Some were bachelor, they are not even married. Others had abandoned their careers. Thomas, rather Matthew, had a career in taxation. He had given it up. Ah, the reason he is asking them not to be troubled in heart is because of what he said following this conversation. He's saying, guys, I have a far superior plan than what you are concentrating over. The kingdom you have in mind is here, this area, small. But I have a kingdom that is global. I have a kingdom in mind for you that is eternal. And then he introduced a very important statement that I'm going to prepare places for you. He's introducing the idea of heaven, which is going to be their new home in preparation. And after they are ready, mansions, place of rest, where there will be no separation, where there will be love and care and joy and peace, where there will be love, abundant love, where there will be reunion with our loved ones, then he would come and take them. This coming and taking them, it is either in death or at the rapture, whichever comes earlier. And uh, you would have thought they should have been excited because they didn't have a frame of reference. So Thomas says, mm, wait a minute, Jesus gets serious. Now wait. We don't know where you're going. Where is the, your new address? Jesus didn't know where to begin. And he only said, concentrate with me. Just keep with me. Because in me and with me, you will not get lost. Because I'm the way. I am the life. And I'm the truth. And then he said, No one, which is a very frightening reality especially if you are contrary to this, that no one comes to the Father except through me. The way. No one comes to the Father except through me. The way is a systematic course of plans and actions. When we were in school, this man is a civil engineer. He's, a, he's a very superior in terms of mathematics. We came to a branch of mathematics establishing surface areas of objects and shapes and figures. Squares, rectangles, triangles, and circles. Very fascinating. And there is the way of establishing the surface area of any square. What is the way? You measure the length of one side because the square is all the sides are equal. You multiply the length of one side and the other. You get the surface area. Rectangle was the same. Now the triangle was a little bit more complicated. And even more complicated was the circle. Because the circle didn't have lines that were straight. So our teacher 
made us discover. We measured circular objects in Ziga, in Panka, in Fundichizu, which we brought and took measurements of the distance all around the circle. And they called it the circumference. Then from one side to the other through the center, diameter. And from the center to the circumference was called the radius. Now to our amazement, whenever we divided the circumference, the diameter, whatever size of the circle, we got the same figure. A constant figure. Then he worked his wizardry on the blackboard and we were able to establish the surface area of a circle by multiplying that constant figure which doesn't change whatever the size of the circle is. If you divide it with circumference and diameter, you get that constant. You multiply it with the radius squared, you get the surface area. We've got the way of establishing the surface area of any circle, the formula. Jesus is saying, I'm the formula for life. If you want to walk through life without getting lost, walk with me. If you want to get the destination, even beyond the grave, where you will be united with your Creator, where there will be peace, where there will be no separation, where there will be no sickness and death, I am the formula. I'm the constant who doesn't change. The unchanged change. The unmoved mover. So, even as we mourn, family, professor, we commend you to the care of the Lord. Who has given you, Justina, for these many years. In the opposite, I was wondering the kind of dance which you would do. Did you have some chichiga inclusion? Eh? Which struck hard. Uh, so, walls. Go oh, rumba rumba. Those beautiful memories that you cherish them and choose to live your life on earth as honoring and beneficial to the one who gave you opportunity to be God, your creator. As Justina lies here, what lesson do we learn? For me, I've learned that any time can be dying time. She wasn't sick. The professor could even have arranged an evacuation. He didn't have opportunity. God had determined her time was over and called her home. This is where she has gone, is her home. We only have the body here. The real Justina is not here. She has been given to us as a gift. She has run her race. She has finished her earthly race. Let us release her. Of course, it is painful. Let us pray. Father, thank you. For indeed it is written in your word that precious in your sight is the death of your sins. Thank you for this saintly woman who has been here on earth. For the many gifts and for the much blessing that she was to us. But we pray that indeed you will help this family cope with her loss. That they will adjust to the new reality of living without her physical presence. We pray for your comfort, for your consolation, for your strengthening, that they will feel your arm surrounding them in every way. And that the legacy that she stood for, that her testimony will even increase in her life, challenging us to model our lives as those who live 
in the communion of saints and reflecting our true forgiveness of our sins. Watch over us, go with us, and remain here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you. The quest of your family. Blessing be upon us all, even as we mourn and feel the sense of loss. This blessing be upon the church, blessing be upon our country, now and forevermore. Amen. We'd like now to hand over to the Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Dear Gaba, guide us on what follows. I thank you very much.
that is, is right after here. And uh, we will reunite with Justina when that time comes. I've been uh, meant to understand that pastoral from Cleveland, who has been uh, a pastor in the family, has arrived. Possibly you can recognize him. Um, it is with deep shock and sadness that uh, we lost our mom in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, yes, she had moved back to Uganda, but her presence was still there. She touched so many lives changed so many like mine for over 30 years I've known the family and uh, Justina has been the rock of the community so many people called never seen never known some left Cleveland many years back and when they heard that she's gone they call from all over, from Canada, from California, different places, just to express the love that Justina shared. I lived in Cleveland for, I've lived there for a long time, and as a pastor, you know, you resolve conflicts, and uh, sometimes people come to confess to you something uh, that has happened uh, because somebody did something but all the time i've lived in cleveland not even a single soul has come to tell me justina did this and did that all i had is love and care i happened to watch on the youtube derek sharing about mom and that is the truth of justina um, the family is loved, and so they shared, they sent me here to express their condolences, their pain, their prayers, uh, their memories, and the fact that Justina loved God, loved people, enjoyed people, they know that Justina is a saint in that, if I want to use that word, we know exactly where Justina is. I always say as a pastor, one of the hardest someone to preach is to preach in a funeral of someone who did not live for God. What do you tell? the family. Sometimes we pretend, but surely we don't know. But for Justina, we know exactly where she is. She was an angel sent to us from above, and she's back where she came from, that is next to Jesus. And so I just arrived, uh, came from the airport right here, and uh, I'm happy to have come to this home to bid farewell to my mom, to my sister, to my friend, my support in every single way. Justine has been there for all of us. I happen to have lost my wife, first wife, in America. And the people that stood with me helped my own son as a single parent. She was a mom to my son. And so, Charles, you lost the best of the best. But you know what? Her legacy, her memory lives. As I said in our service in Cleveland, 
she's now in the stand. You know, when uh, people play a game or a football or a basketball, we all come to sit in the stand to support the team or to support our child playing the game. Justina now sits in the stand, but is asked now to play the game. And she's there to cheer us, to support us, to support Derek, Joy, Eileen, and Maria, and you, Charles, and plus Boniface and other family members, and old mom. She's there as a support. She's there as a cheerleader. She's there that we can make it. And so in your grief, as you go through it, know that she is in a better place. And so I'm here to share Cleveland, the whole of Ohio, United States, loss and their mourning and grieving with you. And they sent me to express those sentiments, what they have in their heart with you. And so they're praying, we'll continue to pray for you and with you as we go through this difficult time. But we know that God will sustain you. God will take care of you. She has been called home. She has been called back. But she's given us the roadmap on how to be. If I could be just a little bit like Justina, I think my life would be worthwhile. And I pray that all of us can follow her footsteps and be like her. So to my friend, to my sister, to my mom, Justina, bye. We love you. Cleveland loves you. United States, Ohio, all your friends love you. We'll miss you, but we shall see you again. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Lili, for that message from Cleveland. I think our time is fast spent. Uh, we need to conclude. Uh, the announcements have been made by Professor Kwesiga. Tomorrow is uh, Muyeve. Muyeve is on Katuna Road. We won't get lost those who are going. Then Friday is uh, Choro Hega at midday. Then we go around the Luare. We will direct you to the farm. Uh, everybody knows Professor. Then... Uh, we have uh, dinner, uh, please uh, don't go. I know we, st we are still observing the curfew uh, times uh, that are uh, imposed by the government. So uh, we need to stop here. I now hand over back to the church leaders as we go back to, to the house. But on behalf of the family, and on behalf of the organizing committee, we want to thank you so much. Uh, for your time, for identifying your church and the family and uh, the condolences messages that you have uh, given them. We thank the service providers and all those watching on live stream, we thank you so much for your time. And uh, we continue to pray for the family and, and commit them to God. Thank you very much. We will stand and sing together. Guide me, oh my great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. And the funeral service team will guide the taking of the body to the place in the house. Guide me, oh.
Checks if she looks okay. okay. You turn off the camera, or you, sh you show some other people. Yes, and then they open. It. Then they will look, and if it's okay, they will close again and open again. Okay. So that she looks okay. 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 Please, you don't need a camera, please. Okay. You show some other people.